Hi folks, I'm Dr. Ed Beyer. Today we're going to discuss reason number six out of 22 in my series of 22 ways our thyroids can go wrong. Reason number six is another type of an autoimmune response called uh, Hashimoto's. There's two ways we can have Hashimoto's. One is due to uh, antibodies against an enzyme in our thyroid, which was, was reason number five. Today we're going to talk about autoantibodies against a protein in our thyroid called thyroglobulin. This is a protein made by cells in our thyroid from which we make thyroid hormone T4 and T3. It's possible to have our immune system attack this protein through antibodies and we can measure those antibodies and that's another form of autoimmune thyroid. So a positive TGB antibody test is suggestive of Hashimoto's disease. Again, Hashimoto was a uh, Japanese physician in 1912, I believe, who discovered this. And this is often missed in the world of, of traditional medicine and, and in uh, endocrinology. But this is not a direct thyroid problem. This is an immune system problem creating a problem in the thyroid. Proper testing is key. I have many, many patients come in that have this that don't know they have it. And it's because it's never really tested for. Now, there's a big difference between traditional medical care and functional medical care when it comes to managing and supporting someone with an autoimmune disease. Honestly, the traditional medical care really doesn't matter to them whether you have positive antibodies because they're still just going to look at your TSH and T4 and adjust your medication accordingly. Folks, let me tell you, if someone has an autoimmune thyroid, uh, uh, antibodies to TBG, the protein, or TPO, the enzyme in the gland, the marker TSH can fluctuate from day to day. It's just it's really not a really good, reliable marker. And that's the marker that many doctors look at to uh, determine what medication the patient needs. So if someone's finding their TSH fluctuating like crazy, it's probably because they have the autoimmune variant of low thyroid. And this is one of them. So in the management of Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroid, we want to know from a functional medicine point of view, why? Why would your immune system form antibodies against your own body, against a protein that belongs in your body. The immune system should not be doing that. And we know that we, once we identify and remove those triggers, we can put this autoimmune problem into remission. And then we want to balance and strengthen the immune system. And we do that through specific testing. In the scientific literature, it's well documented that there are triggers to these autoimmune processes that we look at. For example, some common ones are an inflammatory diet. The standard American diet is super inflammatory. So we have our patients work with our nutritionist and teaching them, hey, look, when you eat this food, it causes inflammation. When you eat this food, it doesn't or it decreases it. So we're, uh, inflammation is really the common thread in all autoimmunity. Um, blood sugar problems. If, your blood, if someone's blood sugar is going too high or too low, that will trigger autoimmune, the autoimmune process. Food sensitivities, the food we eat now, folks, is very different than the food we ate 20, 30 years ago. It's been genetically modified, and despite what certain corporations say, that is really hard on our immune systems. Our immune systems, when they don't recognize when food looks foreign, they're going to attack it, and that's a food sensitivity. We test for that on our patients with autoimmunity, so they know exactly what foods to eliminate and which ones are, not, are okay to eat. Very, very important in the management of autoimmune disease. Chronic infections, viral infections, gut infections, and why they have gut infections, and Lyme disease, bacterial infections, are huge triggers to autoimmune disease. Uh, adrenal dysfunction, the, the adrenal hormone cortisol is an immune modulator. And if, if that cortisol, that stress hormone is off, that will really shut down thyroid and also shut down the, uh, the, the function of our immune system. Other hormone imbalances, especially progesterone estrogen ratios in females, and certain thyroid medications actually have chemical structures of thyroid binding globulin in it, and the actual medication that many of our thyroid patients are taking is triggering this autoimmune response. It's all in the literature, so you can look that up. Also, deficiencies in vitamin A and vitamin D, vitamin D is very common, um, low essential fatty acids, and low glutathione, that is very important for modulating our immune system. If someone's deficient in any one of these, especially glutathione, 
that is an autoimmune trigger. Your immune system will not work properly. Now, interesting enough, there's a large correlation between having autoantibodies against our thyroid and having autoantibodies against our brain in a particular part of the brain called the cerebellum. So uh, in the scientific studies, it shows that over 50% of people that have autoantibodies to, the, to uh, the thyroid, Hashimoto's disease, have autoantibodies to the cerebellum. They could have symptoms like vertigo, imbalance disorders, uh, vestibular problems, feeling off, migraine headaches, uh, digestive symptoms, uh, and chronic neck and back pain. I'm Dr. Ed Beyer. I hope that helps. Have a great day.